Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to call the Board of Adjustment to order. First, let me announce any decisions of this, this board are considered final. If there's anyone agreed by the decision of this board, they may appeal to circuit court within 15 days of the board's decision. Also, no permits or license can be issued until that 15-day appeal period has expired and no appeal has been filed. For information regarding the board's decision, can everybody hear me now? Yeah. All right. All right. For information regarding the board's decision or an appeal to circuit court, court office of land use administration will be your contact. Uh, as you come, you come to the we'll ask that you give your name and address for the record. Address questions to, to me as the chair, not to others in the audience or to the staff. And um, we, we usually allow four in favor of an application and four in opposition. You're limited, limited to five minutes. They'll give you a timer if there's um, an issue with time it'll let you know and uh, if you've got an electronic device I'd ask that you turn it off or on silent so we don't have a disturbance and uh, I'll also remind the board to turn your mics on so, th so that we can adequately record your uh, comments all right uh, we're going to do roll Ms. Davis here Mr. Coleman here. Mr. Metcalf here. Mr. Burroughs currently not here Mr. Milling? Here. Mr. Golden? Here. And I'm William Guest. We have six present, which is a quorum. It takes five to affirm a motion, either in favor or opposition of a uh, request. And if anybody should accuse themselves, they'll still have the sufficient number to pass a motion. And we have Mr. Anderson here to rep represent the board. Uh, All right, uh, we'll go in order. We've got applications to two. 12, 44, 25, 106, Universal Properties Investment. My name's Jimbo Blankenship. Pull that other one, see if that works. Uh, Jimbo Blankenship, 2814 Government Boulevard. Okay, your application's recommended for denial. You want to test why we ought to consider otherwise? Yes, sir. Um, in order for my business to function properly, I needed somewhere to uh, keep my storefront aluminum extrusions. They're 24 feet long. So I built a shed to store the materials in. And where the shed is located, uh, it is the best place for it, the only place for it. Um, we have delivery trucks, dumpster trucks, customer vehicles that drive through the property every day. And if the shed was in any other location, it would create a hardship uh, for the functionality and the flow of my business. Nor is there room in my shop to store these materials, and it would be a safety hazard handling glass and having to walk over boxes of a storefront aluminum. And our neighbor's uh, actual building is in the 25-foot setback. I realize that they're grandfathered in, but I have pictures to support this claim. I have spoken to the neighboring businesses, and no one has had any complaints about the shed and its location. Okay, any questions of the board for the applicant? How long has it been there? Uh, we have been there five months. Okay, and it's been there since you've been there? No, I built the shed. And that's why, how long has the shed been there? Five months. Okay. And your business is? Construction. USC glass, glass contractor. Okay. Commercial storefronts, et cetera. So you're familiar with kind of the permitting process, I would think, through the um, nature of your business? I mean, not directly with that type, but so you know, about you the storefront business I am. Did you obtain a permit when you constructed your building? Yes. Was it at this specific location what on it, the site? It was at that specific location. That we moved the shed, it was at carport that was existing that was there. And we just moved it and enclosed the walls on it so, you know, to keep the weather out. Okay, so you did move it over closer to the property line. Correct, because it couldn't go anywhere else because it would, it would you know, hurt the traffic coming through. In the pictures that I've seen, it looks like there's like a, a normal shed and then there's kind of a, an additional section. Right, that's correct. Um, we had to enlarge it a little bit to allow for the aluminum to fit in there. Okay, what is the, the original shed without that additional piece? What is 20 that foot by 20 foot. What is the distance of it set back from the fence line? Uh, probably approximately 10 feet. Okay, so without that section, you would have been within the setback on the side. Mm, 
I would have to check that. I'm not okay. I'm not percent sure. Okay. Any other questions of the board for the applicant? Okay. Anyone in the audience in favor of this application? Anyone in opposition today? Okay. We have none for the record. Um, I think that's all we have for you, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. So we have, Bert, we have originally a permit for this project? Uh, yes, a permit was pulled to uh, build the addition on the back side of the building. Um, the original building was just this, this front, and it was developed under the current zoning ordinance tree and landscape requirements. And they did obtain the necessary permit to build the addition back here so that the business could locate at this location. Okay, and then the one that's on the property line at the very... We discovered that when we went out to do our final inspections of the Okay, so that was not part of the original permit. Then. That's correct. Okay. All right, thank you. Comments from the board? All right, uh, Chair, entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the variance request for the uh, building. Okay, I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any further? Mr. Discussion? Mr. Chairman, before yes. uh, the vote occurs, may I suggest that you have a condition of compliance with uh, building code requirements, all associated codes and requirements? Okay. Is you there, amend your motion? Just a quick question on that. Is there anything specific that you're concerned with or just kind of in general? Is well, since the shed project? is on the property line, uh, we would want to make sure it meets whatever building and fire code requirements might apply. Uh, since it is metal shed, it may not, there may not be any additional requirements, okay. but then there would also be the wind load requirement. Okay. I'll amend my motion. So, okay, I have a motion with a second with uh, condition. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion since they aye. Aye. Okay, and I vote opposed. Motion carries. Five to six. All right, uh, we'll go to the next application. 62, 13, 57, 20, 57, 20, 47, 29, 4500, 44, 29. S-O-A-P-L-L-C, Susan Carley. That's me. Good afternoon. Your name and address, please. Susan Carley, uh, my home address is 19 Westgate Road, Mobile 36608. The address of um, the building in question is 351 George Street, and that's 36604. Okay, and yours is a previously approved use variance with a walk-in cooler and dumpster pad. And then I think there were some additional plans that were required drawings uh, the approval was subject on the provision of revised information which we have received today uh, okay. that she brought in with her okay and staff recommends for approval subject to the conditions have you seen those yes I have and you're in agreement yes we submitted one of the um, requests this morning and the others are uh, will come during the building process after they see these plans okay any questions of the board for the applicant Okay, is there anyone in the audience in favor or opposition today to this? Okay, if you'll have a seat, ma'am. <laughs> yes, sir, your name and address, please. My name is Joseph Sackett. I live at 1059 Savannah Street, and uh, I'm the closest neighbor to uh, Susan's uh, commercial, commercial property. We share, uh, we share common boundaries on two sides of my property. And the uh, the the cooler and the dumpster pad, I think, are the two primary ish issues. I have no problem with those whatsoever, because of the the uh, sing and the vegetation, the trees, and so forth. To be honest, I can't even see them. I wouldn't even know that they were there. So I'm speaking in support of Susan uh, Carley for uh, the continuance of the, of the variance on uh, on those things. I have no problem with them. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, any questions of the board? All right, anyone else in the audience either in favor or op opposite today? Okay, okay, the applicant has 
stated that she's in agreement to the conditions as recommended by staff. Uh, chair, entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chair. Subject to the conditions. Subject to the conditions. Set by the okay, do I have a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, motion carries. Unanimous. All right, uh, moving on. 221 Dolphin Street. Rob, Robert uh, Marine, Mar Morin? Morin. Morin. Your new address, sir. Uh, Robert Morin, 601 St. Anthony. Okay. Uh, staff recommends approval of your application subject to conditions. Have you reviewed the conditions? Yes. Are you in agreement? I am. Okay. Uh, any questions of the board for the applicant? Okay. Have, have, have a second here, please. Is there anyone in the audience either in favor or our opposition to uh, Mr. Morin's application? Okay, we have none for the record. Mr. Chairman, I just have a quick question. Yes. Robert, what's going to go there? Like, what is there? Is it just getting in shape in order to lease it, or is there a plan? I'm fairly sure there's a ophthalmologist, ophthalmologist going in the right side. They don't know what's going on in the left. The owner? Yeah. This is just a facade improvement. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Did you get that for the record? It was kind of hard to hear. Okay. All right. Uh, once again, the staff recommends approval of subject to conditions. Any further questions or comments from the board? Chair, entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, motion carries. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is application 6215-4655, American Tower Corp. Your name and address, sir? Sir, uh, Brian Sullivan, uh, Craft and Communications, representing American Tower. Uh, address is 2918 Claremont Avenue South in Birmingham. Okay, your application is to request a variance for a replacement of an existing tower at this address. Correct? Yes, sir. It's and a 154 foot concrete pole that we need to replace with a 154 foot uh, steel pole. Okay, and it's subject, it's a recommended for approval subject to the conditions of the staff. Have you reviewed those? Yes, sir. And, and uh, American Towers in agreement with those recommendations and we'll make those adjustments. Okay, any questions of the board for the applicant? And one question, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Yes, Mr. Miller. And I don't know if this is for staff or for the applicant or for staff, but in the staff report, it, there was a discrepancy, I guess. The applicant was saying it was just replacing a 154-foot pole with a 154-foot pole. The staff report contradicted that, correct? Well, I believe that the previous approval for this site was for a 150-foot pole, and the applicant in their application said that the pole that was actually installed, I believe, was 154 feet. Okay. So. Uh, they, the original pole was four feet taller than it should have been, but there hasn't been any uh, notice by, you know, complaints received or notice by staff. So uh, uh, that's what was pointed out in the staff report. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. For a uh, matter of formality, anyone here either in favor or opposition to this request today? Okay. We have none for the record. Um, once again, the staff recommends approval subject to conditions. This is to re replace an existing pole, and it's within an area that's there for what, uh, since the 90s? Yes, sir. And they're just shifting uh, the pole location by about 10 to 15 feet. Okay. All right. Chair, I'll entertain a motion. So moving to the chair, the subject staff recommendation. Okay, motion to approve subject staff conditions. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. All right, uh, this is application five, correct? Yes. 
6216 Cog Cogburn Construction Company. This is for 7107 Ziegler Boulevard. Your name and address, sir? Les Coburn, Coburn Construction, representing 7107, <coughs> excuse me, Ziegler Boulevard. Okay, this is recommended for approval to subject to conditions from the staff. Have you reviewed those? Yes, I have. And you're in agreement? <coughs> Uh, on the sign, yes, yes, sir. And all the conditions? Except for the canopy signs. Well, I'll tell you what, you want to go ahead and proceed with why you th think that we ought to consider the canopy as well? Well, basically, this site here was, was currently a shell. It, uh, it had two shell signs previously. And with the new zoning, zoning ordinance, uh, we were only allowed to put one up with the, with the one set of Chevron letters. The little hallmark that's up to the right of the photo, it's real small. It's I think a two by two. Uh, we're just basically, uh, we, you know, we need to advertise our Chevron's logo. That's, uh, this is a big corner lot and we'll just one set of letters really. It's kind of small for, for it. Uh, I would like the board to at least consider one set if not two, you know. Of the Chevron's? That is correct. The logo to the right. The, the logo, yeah, that is. That's yes. right. It's called a hallmark and uh, Chevron would like to get it on their canopy if possible. If not, I don't understand, but uh, it, it would be nice to have it facing Cody Road on the side. Uh, the Chevron letters faces Ziegler at, at this point. So we've got Ziegler covered for the, you know, the fairgrounds, but Cody Road, there's really nothing there. So if we could at least get one, that would be great. Is there anything actually on the, the building itself? Uh, on the building is a, um, it's a liquor store. It's just a little sign that it, it was there previously. So there's no Chevron sign on the, no, the building? Okay. No. All right. Uh, questions of the board for the applicant? <coughs> Bert, in the past, the logos, we've, this has been kind of a common theme with many of the various franchise or uh, commercial properties where they have their logo, whether it's the Chevron. It seems like even this particular company we've had this before yes but um, you know as a convenience store gas station with just a single tenant they would be allowed a total of three signs so one of those could be a freestanding sign and then they could have uh, you know a s one sign on the canopy one sign on the building or two signs on the canopy and none and none so I can't recall if this site was built prior to its annexation into the city limits or not and if that's the case, then that was how the Shell station was able to have more signage than we currently would allow. Well, I think there's a Chevron, I'm not sure, maybe it's a different uh, group that has one on Cottage Hill as it makes a corner near, near the mall. Do we have yes. a similar request? Yes, I think that's correct. And we allowed, I think, the Chevrons on those as well. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, anyone in the audience either in favor or opposition to this request today? Okay, we have none for the record. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will point out that you did receive an email from a neighbor who lives across the street, I believe. Um, while his property may be commercially zoned on our map, it's still a single family residence. Uh, I have them. The diagram behind you there showing showing 100 foot radius from the proposed digital sign location. So the actual single family residential zone is the uh, fairground property to the north. Right, and this is the re nearest residence to the property. And that's how we received the letter from? I believe so. Yeah, he says his property is on the south east. Corner. corner so that yeah. Be... Mr. Chairman? Yes. Bert, what was the letter? What the... Well, well no, you should just... have a copy. It's, it's an email from Alan Gibson and states that concern is that the place of the sign, the light from the sign will enter his bedroom window and will be visible okay. from the house and the yard and will uh, detract from the aesthetics of the property and its resale value. So he asked for a denial of the sign. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? 
I know the digital signs come up pretty clear as far as a, an agenda item. Do you know if the sign has the capability of having a reduced? Uh, Actually, the, the sign, uh, that, uh, that price sign, uh, you won't see it at all from, from Code Road. It, it actually goes in front of the property facing the fairgrounds. So you, would see, you wouldn't see it. from There's trees, everything blocking it. Um, what we were in question about was the, the canopy sign, the, the little hallmark that, um, that they say that they would see, but it's actually it's real small, and you, you would have to literally stop and sit there and, and look for it. It's very low, you know, it's LED, but it's... I think the 300 feet applies to the digital, digital. sign, the price sign. Okay, I thought that was, you know, proof I didn't know. Yeah, right in front of the top, you could see where the T canopy is straight out. That's where the digital sign's at. So you've got, you've got trees all to the right of that. So how close will it be to the road? Um, it's currently the sign there. We would use the same structure, foundation, everything. Okay. So it wouldn't change. It would just change from manual to LED. And it could be dimmed. It's it's got a dimmer on the on the digital price sign. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any questions of the board? Once again. All right. Staff recommends for approval subject to the conditions. The applicants requesting that we consider the Chevron, we call them hallmarks. Yes, sir. Hallmarks as part of his application. And we have nobody either, we have no one in the audience either in favor or opposition today. We have the one uh, resident that's in opposition for the digital sign. All right, uh, Chair, entertain a motion. Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Subject to conditions or complete as the applicant request? As the applicant request. Okay. I have a motion to approve so, uh, as, the, as the applicant request. And do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any, any further discussion? I would put a condition that the price sign be Reduced. toned down after hours for the benefit of the resident, if that would be acceptable. You mean after dark? Yes, sir. Or a, or a particular time? Uh, after dark. Yes. No. I'll amend my um, motion. Mr. Coleman? Second. Okay. I understand. You understand the condition? I do. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Do we have an opposed? Oppose? Yes. We have one opposed, so five in favor and one in opposition. Gotcha. All right. Thank you for doing Thank you. All right. All right. Application 6217, 5068, 580. David Schumer. David Schumer, Barton Schumer Engineering, 3213 Midtown Park South. And you're one of the lucky ones that the staff recommend for denial. You want to tell us why we got, we got it or otherwise? This, uh, this has been quite a process to come to them to this request for a variance. Uh, uh, we've done community outreach to try to see what the, the neighborhood would want to, you know, be up front. And we had a pre-development meeting on the case as well. Uh, the biggest fear is if the site gets rezoned that the next tenant or owner would come in and, and provide a less desirable development for the neighborhoods. So the idea was to go with the use variance to ensure that should the nursery close, close. or the, the site purchased, it would revert to the current zoning now that's more compatible with the local surroundings, the character of the area. Uh, the public is in favor of the site and the redevelopment of this former tire store slash gas station slash uh, recycle center. And uh, some of the other variances in the requests are kind of in, in line with this. Zone. The not doing the subdivision, right now there's two different zones. There's a residential zone and a business zone. And if you were to do a subdivision, 
the residential zone would go away because the you would you can't have separate zoning on a single property. So to to not do the subdivision maintains the two separate zones, which also in lines with using the two properties as one. And all all three of those are on the same kind of line of trying to protect the neighborhood from any future development while also redeveloping this site that is uh, an eyesore by some people. Uh, the other variances were more for the workability. You have a long, narrow strip down the side that's only going to be accessed by a uh, garbage truck or service vehicles to restock or unstock. Very rare use. And so we requested the reduction in a queuing for a car that may be one a day or once a week. And then we also requested that that site not be paved for that one vehicle a day or one vehicle a week usage you know it will be gated on both sides and not available by any you know patron or employee other than to service that area or the dumpster okay so. any questions of the board for the applicant the surface would be like aggregate it, it would be an aggregate and it, it's you know it's they're trying to sell the plants and it, it would be an attractive like a coarse aggregate like a, a gravel that that would be a and these are, which also allows for much better infiltration. There's a large oak tree, uh, which is the circle down on Church Street, that the existing drainage is to the west, which is left on there. So it would be difficult to tie any storm drainage into, and this would allow a greater level of infiltration. Okay. All right, any questions of the board for the applicant once again? Um, it, just to confirm for the audience that use variants, should this revert back, we say the same nursery should no longer function, it would revert back to its initial uh, zoning? Uh, no, the zoning is not going to be changed uh, with this application if approved. The zoning would stay as it's currently shown on this map behind you where you have the long strip, which is R3 multifamily because there used to be, I believe, two homes here that were uh, cut up into apartments many, many years ago. And then the, then the main portion would remain B1 uh, buffer business. Now, the variance, if it's approved today, would, once it's implemented by the applicant, would, would remain in effect and would not expire. So should this nursery use go out of business, another nursery use could go in. But in order to change it, uh, to a different use that's not allowed in B1 or R3, they would have to come back to the board or they would have to apply through the Planning Commission to rezone the property. Okay. Now, I misspoke yet. Yeah, the zoning is not going to change. It's just the, they wouldn't be able to use, if it were a B3 zone, is what they want to avoid and the neighborhood wants to avoid. Right. Yeah, I think we, we understand that from this right up. Okay, any uh, one in the audience in favor of this application? Four of you, <laughs> pick your best four. <laughs> I, you gotta pick four for the sake of uh, order of the, your name and address. address. Brenda Bolton, 310 West Street. I just wanna quickly say, say we uh, support the variants. Uh, the owners have, have and, and their whole team has worked with us through pre-development meetings since summer. Um, they've been very cooperative and, and we want to support them. We like what they have to say, what they're bringing to our neighborhood. And um, in terms of what the staff has recommended, uh, we, we understand the staff recommendations and how they're tied to the language of the ordinance. Uh, we also understand that it's your judgment here today. Um, to um, you know, support the variants, and we ask you to do that. And um, we we feel that more justice, and it will be more in the public interest if we operate with a use variance than if we jump from a B1 all the way to a B3 rezoning. Um, and I, I just want to point out that the this is basically a retail garden plant center. It's not a production nursery. These will not, this one greenhouse structure is more an accessory than a 
production greenhouse. So I really think that the B1 works for the project, certainly works for the neighborhood and for the owner, and we support it and hope you'll agree with us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Bolton, yes. real quick. Ms. Bolton, Ms. Milling has a question for you. Just real quick. Sorry. You're, you're speaking on behalf of your I'm position, not personally, just but your position I am a resident I'm also speaking for um, a group called the Government Street Collaborative which is a, a community action group of historic districts um, I think my husband's going to speak because he's president of Lyonkoff Historic District this year um, so we're we're here to represent our neighborhoods are thank you and, and we have a lot of folks here that uh, agree with us in fact if I can just go ahead and say if you are in favor of this variance would you let the board know who's who's to do that I think oh, we have pretty, a couple of is, you, huh? I think we have pretty universal agreement <laughs> yeah. on this in the neighborhood thank you all right thank any you. other questions any other questions all right thank you thank again. you all right uh, who's next Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Your name and address, please. Uh, Bill Boswell. I'm a resident of 1609 Government Street in the Lyonkoff Historic District. District. Um, I'm a past president and uh, uh, past a board member of the Lyonkoff Historic District Neighborhood Organization. Today I am joined by uh, the current president, uh, Harold Bolton, along with other members and residents of our Lyonkoff neighborhood, as well as friends and neighbors from other Midtown uh, neighborhoods and communities. Uh, together, we are here to voice our support in favor of the variance request to allow a plant and garden nursery, namely Stokely Garden Express, operate on 1451 and 1459 Government Street and 1458 Church Street. We urge you to approve the variances. Over the past several years, our organization and neighborhood, along with other neighborhoods and historic districts, have worked together to encourage appropriate development on the lots in question. Our goal has been to work with businesses, real estate agents, and property owners on a shared vision to develop Government Street, in particular these lots, in such a way that would allow development that is in the interest of the neighborhood and the city of Mobile. When the recycling center was moved to another location, the lots were open to, to, to greater opportunities. But at the same time, the lots were also open to greater exposure to uses the neighborhood did not desire. Fortunately for us, the Stokely family saw this opportunity and purchased the lots. From the very first moment, we in the neighborhood heard of the Stokely's plans to open the Rita Garden Center and shared their vision with us we as a neighborhood were on board 100%. If you will forgive the pun, we were stoked. We, we saw this as a beautiful addition to our neighborhood and as an appropriate asset to our neighborhood. The Garden Center is a game changer for Leinkoff and all of Midtown and will help to open up our community to a more wonderful development and enrich our neighborhood. Meetings were held where both parties, the neighborhood and the Stokely Garden Center representatives, shared concerns, desires, resulting in a design that met the Stokely business needs and met our neighborhood's aspirations in terms of services and the protection of our neighborhood's historic character. We also reached an understanding and an agreement that neither party desired nor supported a change in zoning which might have undesirable outcomes in the future. While the neighborhood and the Midtown community is very much in favor of the Garden Center, we do not favor or support a change in zoning. The Stokely's agreed with us that the best path was to apply for the variances. Approval of the variance request will avoid the necessity of a permanent change of the current zoning of the property to a B3. Our neighborhood fears an upzoning of this property to a B3 would open this property 
up for uses we as homeowners and business owners do not desire. We also fear a change in zoning would set a precedent for further up zoning of other properties in our historic residential neighborhoods. Approval of the variances as requested will maintain a more balanced approach by achieving a higher public interest and protecting the quality of life in our historic neighborhood. Justice and desirable outcomes will be achieved for our neighborhoods while allowing a very responsible and worthy business neighbor to join our community. I urge you to approve the request for these variances instead of recommending a zoning change that is not supported by the community. We are all in favor of the Stokely Garden Center in our neighborhood and with your approval, we will have a have a dream uh, realized and a vision realized as well. Thank you so much for your time and your support. Thank you. Is there any questions? All right. Thank you Thank again, you. sir. All right. Uh, who's next? My name is Harold Bolton, and I'm president of Lyonkoff Historic District Neighborhood Organization. Sir, your address as well. Uh, Yes, um, 310 West Street, okay. Lankoff. Bring the position of the Lankoff Historic District Neighborhood Organization and all mem members we have communicated with in two separate membership meetings about this issue, and everyone is in, is in agreement that we, are, we support the Stokely Garden Center. We support the variance that is presented. This zoning variant seeks a solution that provides substantial justice to the surrounding neighborhood. The proposal before the board today does justice to the neighborhood and is the best solution to achieve that justice and is not contrary to the public interest. This use variant, as proposed by Mr. Stokely, to address the concerns presented to him by the various historic districts addresses the following important points. The developer and the neighborhood have come together and reached agreement on what should be done. The neighbors want it. It protects them going into the future better than upzoning would. And it operates within the parameters of the existing zoning ordinance. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Thank you again. All right, how many have we had so far? One more. Okay, okay we have time for one more. If there's anybody had us, anything to add? Okay. Is there anyone in opposition here today? Okay, we have none for the record. Uh, we've got several. Um, yes, emails submitted in support and I don't believe I've seen any in opposition do we have any in opposition uh, I don't believe we have received any in opposition and also those aren't actually emails with our new website uh, you can now comment online uh, for associated so these were comments yeah uh, Board of Adjustment or Planning Commission cases okay help me understand for retail garden center where they're just selling product they're not actually propagating it it fits into what um, because Sony they have three? outdoor plants uh, for sale on at least placed outside it requires a B3 zoning district if it were an indoor garden center with no plant no nursery stock for sale it could be done in a B2 district All right. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I have a question. Mr. Milling. Um, Bert, as far as, you know, one of the things that I think has been reiterated a, a number of times is the fact that the neighborhood really supports this type of use. And I've heard it referred to a couple times as a retail garden center, but the actual use variance language, you know, refers to a nursery. Going forward, if there was a situation where for some reason the Stokely's pulled out and it could still operate under that use variance. Are you aware of any kind of unintended consequences that the next 
quote unquote nursery could come in and do something that may not be as compatible with what the neighborhood likes or thought they you know would have in that um, you know the, the the subsequent use well it would be hard to envision given the small size of the property that uh, any future nursery or plant related operation here could really do anything that would be that detrimental um, but there's always the opportunity okay any other questions for the board mr. chairman yes Bert, Bert out of curiosity what would a recycling center uh, what would the zoning classification for a recycling center be you saw that one coming didn't you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, a uh, auto tire center would be allowed in a B3 district district. Okay. And Ms. Pappas is looking up the recycling. Because some recycling centers require I2. That is correct. Correct. Recycling transfer station, I believe, requires I2. Right. Recycling drop off is allowed in a B2, and a retail tire store is allowed in B2. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if I may, uh, going back to Mr. Milling's question, the other thing that the board may want to acknowledge is any future use, if the Stokely's were to, to leave but another garden center was to go in, they, they were limited to this site plan as well. Sure, sure. Any changes to that would have to come back to the board. So, Mr. Chairman, yes, in please. light of that last statement, then, that helped reinforce the uh, dream of this uh, body that's in favor, right? That, that reinforces that it does not change or would not change. Well, it allows the neighborhood to know that should there be any change uh, desired in the future, that it will have to go back through a public process where they will receive the notification and have the opportunity to weigh in their opinion. Okay. Yeah, recycling looks like it's a B2, based on what I found. All right. Any other comments or questions of the board? Well, based on the, the the wide support that we've seen today, and the fact that it, they're, the applicant's rep is trying to work with the community and make sure that it, it's in tune with what they want, I think that it offers, I would think, the uh, necessary conditions to show a hardship with the way the property is laid out as it's kind of a in an area that I think you would be pressed to have a different business in there without it going for a higher level uh, increased zoning requirement I think the recycling center was kind of a an odd fit to begin with but I think we made it work over the years um, and I don't see a substantial just injustice being done to the surrounding neighborhood. I think you've proven otherwise. So uh, as the chair, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a second. Do we have any other discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, as a real estate professional and a uh, um, resident of Old Dolphin Way, I want to um, congratulate uh, Stokely's and commend them for their, uh, uh, their vision and their courage. Um, I've been looking at that property since it's closed, trying to figure out something that would that would. Work. And as one one gentleman said, when they heard her that use, I was ecstatic, and I could not have thought of a more perfect use. So you're a lot smarter than I am. So thank you for what you're doing. Okay, I have a motion with a second. Any further discussion? I'd just like to make one comment. Yes, Mr. Miller. Yes, besides the fact it's not that big a deal to be much smarter than Mr. Sure. Metcalf. No. But, um, uh, so that, I don't know if that's a great compliment or not. But 
Point right. of order now. Now, I, I would like to say, you know, as the first person on this board for a while, the way y'all have gone about it, too, I think, yeah. has been, been in, you know, that usually we get a lot of, um, you know, of situations where the neighborhoods are very passionate and, you know, there's a lot of, um, I guess, um, consternation between the two parties and the way y'all have gone about it and worked together to come up with a solution that I think works for y'all and supports the neighborhood, you know, from my, my position, I think is great. So I applaud you all. Amen. Okay. Any further comments about Mr. Metcalf? All right. We'll proceed. proceed. <laughs> all right. Uh, I have a motion with a second. Further discussion? Once again, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Good luck to y'all. All right. We'll give you all a minute or two to exit. Okay. Now we're on application 6218. Okay. All right. Uh, Application 6218, Spring Hill Village. Yes, sir. And good evening, uh, Andrew Prescott, Burton Property Group, uh, 41 West I-65 <clears throat> Service Road North. Okay, and uh, staff's recommending approval with conditions. Have you reviewed the uh, conditions? Yes. Okay, are you in agreement? Yes. Okay. Any questions of the board for the applicant? This one took a little study. It was a little different then, <laughs> especially with the uh, access and right of way requirements. Um, and you stated you are in agreement with all the conditions? Yes. Okay. Any questions of the board for the applicant? I just have one. What is the redevelopment plan currently for that? The redevelop uh, to add two buildings, uh, one along Old Shell and one along McGregor? And also a facade facelift. And what size will those be? The buildings, um, I believe we have um, on McGregor, I think it's a 20,000 with a two story with a 10,000 up and 10,000 down. And then I want to say about 7,000 along Old Shell, and same concept, uh, about 3,500 up, 3,500 down. Are there tenants already in mind for that, or is it speculative? Or uh, Right now it's speculative. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Yes, yes, uh, that's correct. And Pizza Hut would be one of the ones we'd re relocate to one of these other out parcel buildings. Thank you. Okay, and just knowing the location of this, so it fits in with the village of Spring Hill kind of plan, I don't know how else you'd... Yes, it is carrying forward the concepts of having buildings up to the street to provide a walkable environment along both Old Shell and uh, McGregor. So it is in keeping with the plan. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. Uh, for the sake of formality, once again, anyone either in favor or opposition today? <laughs> Our audience cleared after the last one. All right. Uh, we have none for the record. Um, staff recommends approval subject to conditions. The applicant is in agreement. Chair, entertain a motion. So move, Mr. Chair. All right, subject to conditions. Conditions. Yes. All right, do I have a second? Second. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone in opposition? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. All right, do we have any other business today? Yes, sir. All right, it's all fun today. Yeah. I think we made more people happy than we did not. Yeah. It's Margaret's All right, doing motion it. to adjourn. Margaret is responsible for making it move. Uneventful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right.